You know, there's a growing divide between the rich and the poor in places where technology is the main industry. And it's not the one in Waterloo, Ontario, but the one in Silicon Valley, where the economic divide grows between tech workers and the rest of the population. And the same thing can happen here. But there are Christian groups like the one we're going to talk about now called Faith Tech that's trying to bridge the gap. James Kelly is the founder and director of Faith Tech. Good to have you on 100 Huntley Street. Uh, thank you. Okay, Faith Tech, how did it start? What's the dream and what's the goal? It all started about a year and a half ago. I was at a conference in Toronto and I heard this phrase, in the midst of devastation, there's an opportunity for innovation. And it pierced my soul and I'll tell you why, a couple of my worlds collided. So about uh, four and a half, five years ago, my wife and I with about 18 others, we started a church and, in Kitchener and we all moved to three neighborhoods in our city and my wife and I, th we, we kind of asked God, where do you want us to be? We had just been in South Sudan for about three months. So, uh, yeah, a country that devastated by war and famine. And, and we saw a level of poverty that again kind of pierced our heart. So there's this theme. And so we just asked the Lord, where do you want us? And I started asking cab drivers where they don't like to go oh, okay. in the city. And the reason was we just thought we, we, a lot of neighborhoods in our cities, a lot of people are trying to get out of. Uh, and we thought, well, what would it look like to go into a neighborhood to have a gospel influence? Not be any, sh you know, shining light in our armor or anything like that, but just to simply live out the gospel. And so the Lord led us to a neighborhood where now we've seen um, trying to help people get out of prostitution, suicide, shootings, people just on the margins. So when I heard devastation, that really hit my heart. So then I thought, well, what's the opportunity for innovation? I live in Kitchener-Waterloo as the second highest startup density in the entire world. It's one of the fastest growing tech cities in yeah, the world. Yeah. And I simply yeah. asked, I asked a pastor a week later, I said, who's connecting the two, the innovation tech people with those on the margins? And he didn't know. Through a series of about 40, 50 meetings in a span of a few months, started discovering things like, I met people in tech and they would say, I don't know my place in the church. So the so church, church was, you, you, there's the tech industry, there's the church, but then the two aren't being It was there. PowerPoint or websites. That's all we got oh, okay. for you. <laughs> and okay. then I started meeting wow. people that were inventing the technologies we use today, text messaging, people that are directors and leaders at Google, Amazon. And I'm thinking, how can we use their gifts for the kingdom of God? Started meeting people in ministry with a lot of issues and problems. And then finally we said, let's bring them together. At a coffee shop a year ago, 35 of us met and it sparked what has now become a movement in Waterloo, Toronto, Vancouver, where we're saying, how do you think about, leverage, create technology for the kingdom of God? Because we got a lot of work to do in this area. Well, I mean, you're a young guy, you're bright, you're in the tech industry. Isn't it just about making money and, you know, inventing the, the next thing? Yeah, and I started meeting all these people in tech and they would say to me, why do I work? Why do, you, why do you work? One guy says, is it just to make a ton of money and give it to the poor or my church? Or is it just to tell everyone about Jesus? And I'm kind of waiting for the rest of the statement, yeah, yeah. right? Because there's so much more of why God would have us in the workplace. And so what we're trying to help people discover the depths and the beauty of why God might have them in, in a Google, in an Amazon, in some of the most influential places in the world now how do you then live out the gospel and be the light of Christ in that context? I mean, I can see this in the broad sense, but let's bring it to one particular story. When I was doing some research on, you know, doing this interview today. So what is it, 6,000 Canadians check Google or, you know, yeah. Internet? They're searching over 6,000 people a month in Canada search the phrase, how to kill yourself. Oh. The top search result is seven easy, painless ways to do it. Fourth one down is a YouTube video, shows you how. So we said, someone has to do something. It's one of those moments. Yeah. So get this, two web developers, communications manager and a psychotherapist, buy the domain howtokillyourself.org. And their number one goal, replace all that garbage on page one with a message of hope. Because when you go on their site, it says you're not alone. They're, over in the last four months, they're already on page three. I'm convinced I think they'll be able to make it up to the top. And that's just scratching the surface now. If you start searching phrases like how to murder someone, mm -hmm. how to rape someone, the, the results are quite appalling a lot of the time. And the church could say, well, that's gross. Or the church could say, 
how do we use the gifts and abilities of the church yeah. to do great things Put with resources technology? resources behind it, yeah. Exactly. And you've got a story that's amazing because it saved somebody's life. Yeah, it's amazing. I just mentioned that to you about a couple months ago, one of the ladies on the team, she said, I, I was talking with my friend and the friend was hearing about this website, a suicide prevention site, and the friend said, well, what's the domain? She said, howtokillyourself.org. And it moved her, she started crying. She said, wow. she said, last night, just a couple months ago, last night I wanted to kill myself and I didn't know who to turn to. So I went on Google and I found your website. That site got me through the night before I met with my doctor the next morning. That's unbelievable. Well, I mean, and that, it, it, you know, I know there's, there's many people that are out there that need help. But you, that's kind of one of those touchstone moments when, you know, go through discouragement. So what, what's, the, what's the goal? What's the future? Uh, you know, your wife obviously is committed to this. You've got <laughs> a, a child now. Yeah. What does it look like going forward? Yeah, we decided in October we would do this full time. We had a couple people say, hey, if you do this, you know, we'll support you. Um, and so we said, okay, let's, let's do this full time. I left my business job to do this full time. We just really are convinced that if we can focus within a city on helping churches think about create, build technology, start using the gifts of those that need it, and then focus on a city. Like we're working with refugees now. We're trying to create technologies that help the church get donations and grow. And there's so many things that we can do now with technology that we've never been able to do before. And I think this is a movement I, I could see well across the world. Well, man, you are a breath of fresh air. I appreciate what you're doing. And, uh, and I, I know that, you know, here at 100 Huntley Street, we're trying to build the nation together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I know you've been on previous program, just the young people and the vision and the heart for it. I'm just so thankful, James, for what you're doing and continue the good work. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. And we'll be back with more of 100 Huntley Street right after this.